very much. So, hello, my name is Daniel. I am proud member of Softsar Colombia team, uh, based in Bogota. So, I'm delighted to welcome each of you uh, to this presentation tailored to the Python community. It's my hope that you will find the optimization techniques uh, that we are about to explore, both in dragging and valuable for your projects. Let's dive and discover how we can use these, those techniques to your Django projects. Uh, we will start with the basis and how we can just create a model in Django and then how it is reflected in our tables. And with this reference, we can just understand how to improve our query sets. Um, in the end, we will have some interesting examples that provides like the comparison between the way that we usually do the things if we don't use those techniques and the expected result with the total time if, if, if we of execution if we just use that. So let's start. Um, about the topics, we have query evaluation in Django. Um, there we, we have the basics, how when we create a migration in Django, we have our, in our table. In this case, I will be using Postgres to create the migrations or to show you the examples as a result. And then we will continue with the query optimization techniques. It is important to start with the select related and prefetch related because we have usually foreign keys. Um, we have usually relations from one to one, many to one, one to many, and we need to access to different attributes from or objects from our Android classes, but we don't uh, make in consideration that we are doing an extra effort in the background, doing more queries than expected. Um, we then we continue with only different excludes. It is really easy to understand and to check. Uh, only differ is at the field level, and the exclude is the opposite to the filtering. But if we use it as well, we can reduce validation in our Python code. And then we will continue with expressions. It is all about the native uh, models that or implementations that we can use like F, Q. We can use the aggregate. We can use the annotate. And um, with that, we can just say, OK, I, I now understand that in the background, when I, I use an annotate and aggregate, I am changing the way that Django is creating a query to get or to fetch the information from our table. So as well, it is really useful. And finally, we have two examples, but uh, those examples are really interesting to see the difference. I did use a library to check in how many processes um, about the query set is using Django to give us a result from an API request. So let's continue with the understanding query evaluation in Django. So in Django, you define models in Python, which corresponds to a database fields, tables. Each attribute of a model represents a database field. Django used these model definitions to generate SQL statement for creating table and adding index and more. So in this case, we have a specific uh, object, which is a representation of a model. Um, we have the post and we have the comment. Those two models will be the example in the next steps that we want to improve. But every single model has their own attributes, like title, content, author, published date, updated date. And the same thing for the comment, post, author, content, and create date. Every single model has their own attributes for this field type. For example, chart, chart field, text field, foreign key. This is really important because the author is pointing to one specific foreign key, which is how this user. 
Um, so when we store that in the database, we will have only the ID. Um, data and field, and the same thing for the comment. We have the foreign key and text field and data and field. When we manually create that, then we need to create a migration. This migration, we will um, have as a result a reflect or the same thing as a, of the model that we manually create uh, at the tables. So in the tables, when we made the migration, we will have this the schema and then the table name. So with that, we'll have the auto-generated column, which is ID. We will have the content, create date, author, post. As you can see, we have there the author ID. And then if we compare that, we have the author, which is the foreign key. Um, so the OR, the ORM in Django, uh, is trying to help us when we are accessing to the attributes. But if we make in consideration that we only have there the author ID and we don't have the, the detailed information from the author, uh, if we don't make in consideration that, we will doing many different query sets uh, in the background to get the detailed information from the author. So with this information, uh, we need to uh, go to the next step, which is retrieving objects. So to retrieve objects in your database, you need to construct a query set via manager on your model class. A query set represents a collection of objects from your database. It can be zero, one, or many filters. In SQL terms, a query set equates equate to a select statement and a filter is a limitating clausure such as where or limit. So with this basic information, we have there a variable which is post, which is expecting as a result of the variable type is a list of both. So we are expecting there, getting the object, use the manager, object manager, and with the function all, we are expecting to get all the posts that we have right now in our database. So when we do the select in the background, we will be converting that into a specific, with the or M into a specific list of posts. And then we just need to add, iterate that and get, get every single post and do something with this logic from, from, for, for every single post. We can do an, any validations. We can just filter for any reason. And this line of code, which is post that objects that all is the same representation from select all from post. And also, if we want to create a, a specific um, where, we just need to, uh, in this example, we have, for example, get post by ID, we have the post ID, and we are expecting an integer as a parameter. And the return time is an optional of the post because uh, we can get or not a specific post uh, because if we don't find by ID this specific post, it can be known. So for this reason, I use the try set uh, block. Uh, we declare the variable for post and we use the posted objects to get expecting as a parameter the ID, uh, which is the post ID. This is a, a primary key and we're expecting the result as a result one post. If we don't have this uh, value as expected, we will have uh, like a non result because we cannot get or find those values. So it is same, it is the same reference representation for, for the or M. When we are fetching that, we are using a select all from post where ID is the post ID. So if we go to the, ba to the basics of SQL, we can do many filterings uh, with using the where clauser. We can just uh, define which columns do we want to get. We can use an average. We can do any different uh, tools to preventing just iterating every single post to filter or to take a zoom of all the columns. We can do many different things with the query optimization techniques. So with that, we can start with the select related and prefetch related. 
initially we will talking about the select related so we use select related when the object that you are going to select is a single object which means forward or in key one to one and backward one to one so the most important thing here is uh, the foreign key that we have there which is from outer because one post has one outer in this example so let's see those uh, graph in this case we have three posts every single post has their own id has their own title and content but they have the same author but it is just for the example it can be any relation any post can have any different author doesn't matter but uh, the thing here is that for every single post we want to access to the author so let's go with this first example which is using the post.objects.all that we already know that it is a select all from post so uh, when we use this line of code from our django project using python we will be in our, in our arm fetching all the fields all of the rows that we have in our database data set and imagine that we have 10,000 records for now it will be using the select all from from, from the post and the or it, it will be converting this specific uh, query set result into a list of posts so in this level we have the post and we are currently in the post one and we want to access to the outer so in the post one when we access to the outer we need to do also in the background a new sql because we don't have currently this information in our specific um, column we only have in our column the outer id but we don't have the detailed information of every single outer so for each time when we access to outer key we will create a new select in our query so if we have for example 10,000 records we will have as a result 10,001 query sets because the first one is a select all from post and the second one is every single um, sql that we are doing for accessing to the author uh, for every every single iteration that we are doing so for every single post author we will have and a specific query set. In this case, we'll have four query sets to get all the authors and and then all the posts and uh, one for, for get all the posts and three to get all the authors that we have for every single post. So what happened if we use the seller related? Okay, the seller related is expecting the column that we have in our model currently um we can define filtering or we can define an uh, exclude or anything what we want to do after the select related but in this case we are fetching and we are using the same logic we are fetching all the authors and the process is really similar when, when we use select related it's fetch all the information that we have from our database and then um, it will be using a specific sql with select all from post, but it will have also an inner join, which contains the relation on outer. So as a result, we will have a post, but now this post post will have a, the new column. This new column is the specific um, detail for the outer. So when we from outer are accessing from post are accessing to the outer um, we have in our memory in memory we will have the detailed information from this other model so this query contains contains instead an inner join on outer table preventing multiple queries when accessing it so um, with these basics um, we only will have only one query set as a result uh, instead of 10,000 for example if we have 10,000 records 
uh, the memory, and when we retrieve the objects, will contain all the columns, and all the columns will have the detailed information. This is for one to one. And let's continue with the prefetch related. This is for many to many fields. So we use pre prefetch related when the object that you are going to select is a multiple objects, which means for one many to many fields. If one, one to many, or when we access to the attribute of the author, we are expecting to have as a result a set or a list of this of the result of the table. So I did change that. It is just for, for the for the example, but maybe it's not a real case. But in this case, we have the same three posts. But for every single post, we have uh, many authors. For example, this post has one, two authors. The second one, one half, one, two authors. And the last one have only one author. So with the first example, using the post objects all, we have uh, we are retrieving the information from the database, we are using a select all from post, and we will have our specific object of post, and then um, we will need to do an SQL with join to get the list of authors, to get the related authors that we have for every single post, so it will be uh, one more query set to our database per iteration that when we access to the attribute, to this attribute. So, it's a similar uh, process as the previous one with the select related because we are using the same exactly query set. But there we will have a set of, as a result. And continuing with this, with the prefetch related implementation on the specific column that we want to work with, in this case is the author. The process is a bit different to the previous one because um, we have a list of authors per every single post. So initially, Django will be creating two query sets. One, to get all the posts, and other, to get all the authors that are related to the post. And taking in consideration that we have three posts and five authors, one, two, three, four, five, we will have all the authors, and it will be assigning for every single author, for every single post, uh, their own authors. So. In the end, we will have for this post uh, a list of author, and it is a list when we access to the author. So we have in memory right now with our SQL with inner join and a specific direct access in memory to this information. So when we access to the post, we can get a, get a list, and for this list, we can get a specific author. So we will have the two query sets instead of uh, the uh, 10,001, because for every single iteration, we will have this different of, the, of data of the management in, 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 man, in the code, especially. So with these basics, we can continue with the only differ and exclude. So starting with only, uh, this terminology and this, uh, th those tools are really simple and easy to manage, but it's useful to reduce the total memory usage when we are working in a query set and we have maybe maybe too many information to manage and we don't want to retrieve all the, op the attributes that we have in our model. So this method is used to load only a subset of model field from the database fields not specified in the only, only call are not retrieved from the database. So there we have a variable which has a list of posts and uh, we have uh, the object, we use the object manager using the function only. This is a function that we want to uh, complain here. And then we define only the columns that we want to work with. In this case, in this case it's title content. We are not uh, use, uh, it, available to use the column which is author. So if for any reason we want to create a calculation which uh, is related to only two columns or a specific detailed column that we want to work with, it is really useful because we are not 
giving in memory more than expected. So when we are iterating, we can do the validations over those two columns. If we, if we want to access to the author, it is not part of the dict as a result. So it will be raising as an exception because we cannot do we cannot access to that. It works also at the field level. So the fields or the attributes of the model is the is the, is the ones that we can change. Uh, about differ, this method is the opposite of only. It tells Django to load all fields except those specified. It is the same uh, about only because the field level. So there we have a variable which is post. We have a list of posts. And then with the manager, we are using the function defer. So there we are saying, okay, I don't want, I want to get all the attributes except author. Um, and when we are doing some validations with this specific object, is it, it will be really similar. We cannot access to this column. Um, it, because it is in part of the memory that we have. So it is also useful if we want to exclude a specific one, if we have too many uh, columns and we cannot specify all the ones that we want. Depending on the case, you can play with that. Um, it's really useful. And uh, continuing with the, um, the, the exclude, it is the opposite of filter. It's also really simple because this method is used to exclude certain records from a query set based on the criteria you specify. It's similar to filter, but it removes them from the query set. So we can use in our, in our line of code, uh, the exclude and the filter, if we want. We can use just exclude. Um, the, the thing here is that we are using a negation of the, of the, of the filter, so it can be here always as uh, with the attributes that we want to work with. For example, we have variable which is expecting a list of post and we use the function exclude. So we are excluding all the authors which has the username sample. So when we access that, when we are iterating every single one, uh, we don't need to create a validation in Python to say, okay, what, what is the name of the author? If it's different to example, let's uh, iterate because the plan with those optimization techniques is just to uh, use this in this tool, which is the query set manager and prevent the validations in Python to just get the information that we want to work with. And in the end, we will be reducing the time a lot. So for this reason, we can continue with the expressions uh, that I consider that are really amazing because uh, with that we are preventing to do many validations we are preventing to do many uh, many, many validations at the python side so uh, let's continue with f uh, an f object specify a reference from a column in the database model from the current row is particularly useful for updating filtering and ordering based on the values of the field set themselves so we use that uh, in our Django DB models with import f, and we have those two uh, basic examples. But if you want to go more deeper, you can search for f, and you can discover and, and you can reuse that function in your project in many ways. Or if you maybe was seeing this specific function and you want to understand what is going on with that, um, it is really simple because. Uh, it is in this example we are we are, ju we are just updating a uh, specific column which is price. So, in, in the initial uh, behavior, we will try maybe to iterate every single product, and for every single product we will be getting the actual price and multiply it by the value that we want increase it by 10% or something like that. And in the end, we will be using the dot save. But in this case, we just need to do a one line implementation, which is we are setting the specific column that we want to update. With the F, um, we are saying, okay, give me the current value of this specific row 
and with this reference let's change the value uh, increasing the uh, in a specific percent um, this column which is the the ones that we are interested in for so it takes really less time of execution and finally it will be doing the same process instead of needing to iterate every single transaction um, it is for field for update but it can be also useful for filtering for excluding because for example in this example we had the unread books so for every single for, for every book we have like the pages read and the number of pages so if the page reads uh, read are less than the column of the value of the column the number page that means that we don't have this book read so it is useful for that to compare a um, column with another column uh, and get the value especially mm, uh, this is uh, there we have a basic example with but we can do any multiple combinations and complex queries with that um, the second one is about Q it is also really useful because this object in Django is flexible a uh, tool that allows you to construct complex queries using OR and a NOT operator. It is especially handy when you need to express queries that are too complex for the standard filter and exclude methods. Similar to the F, uh, we import that from DB models, import Q. And there we have a few examples. So we have a book that we are trying to filter. And as you can see, we have some interesting things here. We have an OR, we have an I, we have a parenthesis. Um, so we are expecting that this first condition will be true. If not, because the OR, we can also have one. We need to have those two validations to be true to filter this specific book. So as you can see, we can do those validations having the information uh, of the columns that we are expecting, but um, this validation is about more, comp more, more complex, and we don't need to do that in the Python level if we, because we can also try to filter and get all the the books and try to ask the same thing, but in a conditional a part of the query set, we can do that, but this is more effective. Um, and if you use the next topics that we will talking about, like the aggregate, like the um, the expressions like um, can happen a new column from the specific model, it will be really useful because you have a really complete standard to, to, to filtering. Um, continue with the books, which you can also using that with exclude. Um, you, we have an OR there, so uh, any of those values should be true to, to, to exclude the book. And finally, also we can have with a filter and exclude if we want. In this case, we have an OR and we have an exclude. You can play it with that as you want, depending on your case. So for this reason, it depends. But based on the previous previous information, um, the aggregate is not part of a model implementation that we want to import. It is part of the object manager in the arm of Django. So it allows you to perform aggregate calculations such as sum, count, average, mean, max, accord a set of success objects that match the query parameters. It's useful for generating summary values of data without needing to retrieve all the objects in Python. So, for example, we are uh, here calculating the total of particular column. So we have a sum model and we use the aggregate from the object manager and we declare this specific column as a result. But this column can have the name that we want. Uh, it's just a variable name, but it is in part of the expected result. The expected result of behavior will be with this specific in, uh, 
model that we are importing. In this case, our operator that we are importing, which is sum of a specific column. In the background, it will be like the representation of select sum, some column from some object. So we are manipulating the SQL that is working in the background. And as a result, we will have as a, uh, only the column that we defined it for. So we don't need to save in memory all the results of the all the all the rows that we have for some model. Um, then we have the count the number of objects in the in our query set. For example, uh, we have a count, so it is select count ID from some model. So when we access to the to the specific variable, we will have um, the count. Uh, uh, access to the variable and we access to the dictionary result as an object and we will have this specific column which is count that we work with and we can also calculate the average of a column so the we can use the mean max average anything and we'll be returning the value so um, it is preventing us to iterate for every single and need to do a lambda or list comprehension to do an average and some count from the result of the query set um, let's continue with this second one, which is annotate. The difference between the aggregate and annotate is that the annotate is happening a new specific column for every single row that's, that is returning the object. So for this specific object, we are happening a new column, which is manually created. So it allows you to add calculated field or aggregate to each object in query set augmenting the object returning by the query without altering the original database schema. So, for example, we can do in this example a post with common counts. We can use the annotate and we define this column, which is not part of the model, but is now part of the schema that we are returning from the query set. So the common count, we are counting the comments that we have for every single post. So when we are iterating, we have for every single post, we have the title, but now we have the common count. So we can do uh, a con, a min, a max, we can do a subquery, and subquery can be a new uh, object dot filter to another specific table. We can use an F to point to another table. We can use a an an primary key to get uh, uh, another detail list as a result, or we can validate if a subquery six we can do many possible validations and combinations to get <clears throat> uh, a value of the on this column from the annotate. So it is also really useful. It's a powerful tool because we can we can prevent on using in the in the iteration process uh, a new query set to get a to get a value and then validate again that we can do anything in our annotate. So this is an awesome tool. <clears throat> so let's continue with this uh, batch insert annotates. It is, it is also useful because it is more common to implement in our projects. Um, uh, when inserting or, or update a large number of rows, consider batching these operators to reduce the number of database hits. Django put a date and create and transactions can help us to reduce the hover overhead. Applying these tips can help you write more efficient Django queries, reduce server load and improve the responsiveness of your Django application. A part of this example that looks like uh, with too many lines of code, it is really simple in terms of what it's doing. We only need to uh, have a base of information. In this case, I manually set the comments that I want to happen to my database, but um, it has the content, the post ID, the authors, and then we are just getting the post, the list of posts on the user that we have on those columns on the tuple. And then this is the most important thing. This is the really important thing, which is we are creating the instance of the object that we want to bulk uh, create. We set the attributes that this specific object needs to have. And when we have the object 
uh, with the instance that has filled the values, uh, we can just say, okay, let me use the model, the objects, and use the bulk, bulk create, and we send the list. When we send the list of objects that we have instanced, we can finally say, okay, uh, we don't need to use for every single one the dot save. We are dot dot create. We use only the the list and it is in comparison when we have too many information, too many records in our database, it will be amazing to use. And the same thing for the bulk update. Uh, in this example, we are, we are just getting the, all the posts and for every single post, we are updating the title. Uh, when we have that uh, title updated, we are using, okay, from the post, I want to use the bulk update. And I send the, the list of the previous updated uh, fields from the query set, and I send as a parameter in a list the column that I did update it. With that, it's more efficient uh, the function both bulk update in focus to update um, the column and don't don't see other columns that being not updated. It is all about the terminology on the implementations and the difference that we have with. And let's go with the examples. Um, this first example is about the optimization with seller related. It is really similar to fetch related for this reason. In this example, we have only that one, but um, <clears throat> so there we have the model post, which has the column navigator with a foreign key. Um, it, it is the, the same example of the first slides. So there we have a view which has an endpoint, which is get all authors. Um, the logic here is really simple. We are getting all the objects. We have 10,000 posts, exactly. Um, we are saving every single author in our in a specific list because we have the post, but for every single post, we, we will, will be accessing to the column author and we want to return a list of the username of the authors. That's it. Um, there. Uh, is No, no. I thought uh, it's a problem with my internet connection, but seems uh, it's with Daniel. Something wrong. Okay, let's wait a few minutes. Uh, this record will be sent to you uh, after our uh, event with a follow-up uh, letter. Oh, thanks. Hello, I'm back. Sorry, I'm not sure why my computer gets restarted, but uh, 
let me really fast share my screen. Uh, it was really in the sweat, but okay. Um, let's return with the example. Give me one second. Now, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, sorry for the delay, but it was really weird that my computer got started. So going really fast with the, with the example, uh, we have but, there. Sorry, Joe. Daniel, uh, but uh, we can see only in uh, uh, not full screen, I think. Uh, okay, let me go back to Zoom. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I see what happened. Mm -hmm. Stop share, share screen. And then... oh, let me start. Share the screen. And again, now you can see the wall screen. Mm, no, but looks the same. <laughs> oh. I think. Why? Um... <clears throat> Let's see.
it is for and now yeah. you can see yeah yeah yep. oh, okay yep. okay awesome you can uh start sharing um not sharing uh yes from the right slide i mean and now you can see the wall wall screen the recording and everything as well right yep okay so um but maybe a uh, click uh, play from the current slide uh no, no, no. current slide yes but it's get smooth the screen i did click that but not sure um Oh yeah, I think. And now. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. So, um, going back to the example, uh, to the per per first example from the uh, select related, we have um, a, uh, a, um, an entry point which is get all authors, and we are getting all the list of authors. And finally, with this, we are accessing to the attribute which is author, so that's okay. And finally, we use the select related. The only thing between this uh, query set is select related versus getting all the objects. So there isn't any other variation in the logic. It's the same thing. It is the same logic. But uh, if we go really fast, we the endpoints. I use this library to access to all the endpoints that I, I consume. So the first endpoint is get all authors. As you can see, we have 10,001 queries in around 22 seconds. It is uh, too much time to reproduce that. So it is, it is a bit hard. So to if we go to the detailed SQLs that we have for the 10,001 queries in our data set. We have a select from from the TestDB post, but also we have uh, for every single author accessing, we have a, a select to get the out user. So we have it duplicated in too many times. We have too many records because for every single dot author that we access, we will have uh, a new select but if we compare that it with the select related we will have only one query in a half second so and it is the same result but the difference there is that we will have an inner join with an outer user out user which contains right now in memory our query set result all the information that we have all the information so it is the result that we have uh, the difference is really high, um, of course, uh, it is just using this specific implementation. And then let's continue with your example. Uh, we have the author. Uh, sorry, uh, that one. We have the, uh, the optimization with conditionals. So um, the logic here is really simple we are using an or a validation in our code uh, when we are iterating every single post we are asking if the title is post title by title 18 or the title is 500 and then we are saving all the titles in our database in our return of the query set so uh, we can do this validation in the python level or we can do this validation in our filtering using Q. So we have there the or, and then we have the title that we are validating for, and we have the post, post title 500, and we get as a result the, the same logic. So if we go for the history, we have get all posts with validations. We can go the query. It is a simple query. We are using the select all from post um that's it but but if we go to the using queue we will have another variation which is aware 
in this case, this where is set, setting a title where the post title is uh, 18 or 500. So this is spe the specific validation that we are looking for to prevent validations in our Python level. So that's it about the presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you, Daniel. Uh, maybe someone has a question. Nope. Okay. <laughs> In this case, uh, Daniel, uh, thanks a lot for your presentation and for sharing your experience. Uh, thanks all for joining us today. Uh, we hope this presentation was interesting and uh, useful for you. Uh, you will receive a feedback form uh, shortly. Uh, please fill it out. Uh, your opinion matters for us. And uh, we will be happy to see all of you next event. Uh, so, have a nice day and uh, weekend. Have a nice Bye. Day. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel.